Hello there. Welcome to Just the Discs. We talk about Blu-rays here. Today I am talking about some classic films. Wait, don't switch it off, please. Uh, from the folks at Indicator. Uh, I know that these aren't always the most popular movies on this channel, but I do feel like I've had some people thank me for talking about these. So I'm going to keep doing it because I love them. I love classic film, and uh, one of these is a discovery for me, and maybe one of them will also be, uh, because basically what we're dealing with here is I have one movie that I've watched and two that I haven't, but I wanted to talk about the discs nonetheless. Um, the movie that I watched and that I was you know, pleasantly surprised by, but I'd never seen, was Frank Capra's film State of the Union from 19... 19- 48. Now, this film um, stars Spencer Tracy, Katherine Hepburn, Van Johnson, Angela Lansbury, Adolf Menju, and it is based on a Pulitzer Prize winning stage play. And you can feel that actually um, at the beginning of the movie. But after a while, I sort of became so mesmerized by the acting uh, that I sort of got caught up in the movie. Um, but the idea is that Spencer Tracy plays a well-off, well, you know, sort of a bootstraps to, um, riches gentleman who runs some aircraft, um, making plants and he is being courted by, uh, sort of the Republican party to become the next president. And he is a guy who's very sort of opinionated and doesn't necessarily line up with the Republican point of view, but in some ways does. And anyway, he's a good speaker, and he inspires people. And Adolf Menju plays a politician who's trying to guide him on the way to potentially getting the nod at uh, the nomination for president. And we find out that, you know, in the early scenes, that he is estranged from his wife, played by Katherine Hepburn, who apparently was not the first choice of the film. Um, It was going to be someone else that I'm blanking on right now, but that comes up in the really wonderful commentary track I'll talk about in a minute. Um, But anyway, Catherine Hepburn was available and got cast, and the movie is all the better for it. Uh, So they've been estranged, but Adolf Menju suggests that she should come with him on this initial... It's not even his beginning of his campaign tour it's like the beginning before the beginning campaign tour it's kind of like can we even do this um and so they invite her along but you find out they haven't spoken in like four months and that it's pretty clearly laid out that he's having an affair with Angela Lansbury who plays a very driven woman who loses her father at the beginning of the film but inherits a publishing empire and so it is between her and Adolf Manjou that they decide on the candidate that they think they can get elected between Manjou's sort of political know-how and the influences from the papers that Angela Lansbury, Lansbury runs. And she even has like a tete-a-tete with her editors, her head editor guys, and ends up basically firing all of them because she's saying like, you will back my candidate or you will walk. And a lot of them do walk. And she's like, all right, whatever. Um, so anyway, it's interesting to see that play out, that relationship and Catherine Hepburn's response to it and how Angela Lansbury has to be involved in some of the events that are part of this political campaign lead up. And that's really hard for Catherine Hepburn because she knows what's happening and she sees it as a real insult and awful thing for her um she and tracy have a couple kids together and so it becomes a thing where you watch the movie start to play out and i love spencer tracy i think he's one of our great actors and you're like okay is this guy going to be the guy that's and we've seen this in capra films it can really go either way but is he gonna be the guy that sticks to his guns and stays the individual that he is and still wins the nomination or is he going to be the guy that changes and uh, homogenizes his views based on advice he's getting to help him get the nomination? And I'm going to let you watch the movie to decide where it goes. 
But I do think it's really fascinating how it plays out and the emotional levels that the characters are playing on. And it really, it just really delivered as a, as a movie that I enjoyed that I hadn't seen before. Um, I like Capra a good deal and his films are very rah-rah Americana, but this one had that more modern feeling in some ways because of the fact that he's having an affair and it's right out in front and they don't, they don't totally try to cover it up, but they are kind of worried about it. It's weird. It's just an interesting like character flaw to put out at the beginning of a Capra movie where you want it to be the most wholesome guy ever. He's not that guy. He is different and flawed in that way. And I, I think they found that really refreshing in some sense. Uh, Van Johnson, who plays sort of a not quite Cary Grant, his girl Friday type, but he's a newspaper guy that works for one of um, the papers that Angela Lansbury runs. And um, he is the best I've ever seen him. I'm actually not a huge Van Johnson fan, and this is not meant as a big slight, but I always tend to find him in romantic leading man kind of roles to be rather dull, just not uninteresting to me. But he's playing the kind of snarky, you know, fast talking dude here. And he really pulls that off. And it's like I said, maybe one of my favorite performances I've ever seen. And Adolf Manju is equally good as sort of a slightly conniving political dude. And apparently he, along with Ward Bond and the commentary talks about a few others were real hardcore um, you know, red haters, like trying to drive the communist party out of Hollywood and were very active and, and outspoken in doing so. Um, and so I, I do think that's an interesting um, little wrinkle to this film is that he's real, he really was that guy and apparently kind of a kind of a not so great dude in a lot of ways. And that's, I guess that kind of works for the character ultimately. I don't know. Anyway, uh, a very solid movie. And again, based on a stage play, but it feels stagey, but is done in such a way. And the acting is good enough that I really was pulled into it. So I really dug that. Um, okay. So this also has a wonderful commentary track that includes, uh, Glenn Kenny, his wife, Claire Kenny, and uh, Farron Smith Neme. And Farron Smith Neme and Glenn Kenny have done commentaries before, but the addition of um, Glenn's wife to this one, they had done specific work on either this film or Capra, I can't remember, um, that makes her a great relevant addition to this group. And it's fantastic. They really, they're the ones who talk about Manju as this, you know, the real character that he was, the real guy that he was. And a lot of that behind the scenes stuff and play adaptation stuff, they just give incredible context and they're just cinephiles I'd love to hang out with. And so it's just a really delightful, uh, well-researched, you know, commentary track that I, that I really enjoyed. Um, let's see here. Then we also have, uh, the John player lecture with Angela Lansbury. This is, uh, an archival audio recording of the celebrated star of film stage and television in conversation with Rex Reed at London's national film theater in 1973, almost 90 minutes of conversation right there. Um, that's an audio form national treasure. Um, this is a new feature, 30 minutes academic Lucy Bolton discusses a life and eventful career of the much loved performer, Angela Lansbury. And then you get the original opening and closing credits. Apparently there's a story about Capra pulling out the MGM logo at the beginning because his production company made this movie. That's covered in the commentary. That's well versed there. Uh, trailer, image gallery, publicity materials, 40-page booklet with new essay from Raquel Stetcher, another writer that I'm a big fan of. Archival interviews with director Frank Capra, an account of the working relationship and contrasting politics of co-stars Catherine Hepburn and Adolf Manju apparently not fans of each other because she was much more left-leaning. He's more right. They didn't, she was pro about it, but she really didn't talk to him much on set, understandably. Um, and this is uh, Region B locked. And in fact, I think all these discs are Region B locked, so keep that in mind. Um, just a brief, from the opening of Raquel Stetcher's um, essay uh, state of the union was director Frank Capra's last important film marking the end of his reign as America's preeminent storyteller while he would go on to make several more films and find work in other media the era of the Capra-esque movie uh, one that could 
enchant audiences with solid storytelling and a heavy dose of virtue had officially come to a close. These types of films had fallen out of favor with the movie-going public, the post-war economic boom, the threat of communism, and the beginning of the Cold War greatly altered their sensibilities. Even perennial Christmas classic It's a Wonderful Life wasn't fully appreciated in its time. Looking back, that film, as well as Capra's other socially conscious movies, Mr. Deeds Goes to Town, You Can't Take It With You, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, and Meet John Doe, only tapped into the zeitgeist of the time, but also uh, would also elicit feelings of nostalgia for the good old days from generations to come. So that's a great start to that essay. But yeah, a really neat um, Universal Pictures movie from Capra. So that's State of the Union. Now the two that I haven't watched real briefly, um, I've seen this movie and I love this movie. This is uh, Bluebeard's Eighth Wife and this is Ernst Lubitsch's film. It is from 1938, uh, 10 years prior to uh, the previous film. I just mentioned, um, let's see here. He married in haste and repeated in pleasure. An American multimillionaire, Michael Brandon, that is Gary Cooper, in this case, uh, marries his eighth wife, Nicole, the daughter of a broken French marquis. Uh, but she doesn't want to be only a number in the row of his ex wives and starts her own strategy to tame him. Um, so this is a great, you know, um, marriage, sp- not spoof, but comedy of marriage, if you will, and handled in that deft and clever way that only Lubitsch could. It truly defines uh, the Lubitsch touch. Um, and the cast is incredible. So you've got Colbert and Gary Cooper, but you also have Edward Everett Horton, David Niven, uh, you have Franklin Pangborn, uh, regular in the uh, films of Preston Sturges, I guess, and uh, Lubitsch. Uh, but I remember this being just a delightful comedy and one that's gotten a release from uh, from Kino, but I, I believe this would be probably the same scam, but I think this has more extra features. Um so it has the Guardian interview with Claudette Colbert from 1984, a 57-minute archival audio recording of celebrated performer in conversation at London's National Film Theater. Obviously, you know, talking about more than this film. Um, but I'm a big Claudette Colbert fan, so I'm very curious to check that out. United States, 1944, 46-minute military training film narrated by David Niven uh, during his time away from Hollywood to serve in the Army and produced to instruct British troops in the history of their American allies. Um, and then we have a limited 40 page booklet with new essay by Pamela Hutchinson, archival production reports, contemporary profiles of producer director Ernst Lubitsch and an account of the lost 1923 adaptation of Bluebeard's, Bluebeard's Ace wife with Gloria Swanson and Huntley Gordon. Um, so yeah, uh, definitely looking forward to checking this one out. Screenplay by Charles Brackett and Billy Wilder. And that's probably part of the reason I love it so much is it is a really great script They would go on to work with Mitchell Lysen and Claudette Colbert in a movie called Midnight, which still doesn't have a Blu-ray, but from 1939, the year after this. But a really great screwball comedy that has an incredible script by um, Brackett and Wilder. Really love it. But Lubitsch does a great job. This is one of my favorite comedies from this period. They're just really, really good together. Uh, And this one, Designed for Living, gets some attention from the Criterion release. Um, Trouble in Paradise also got a Criterion release. This one didn't, but it is up there with those films in terms of the comedy and the deafness with which Lubitsch handles the subject matter. So Lubitsch's Eighth Eighth Wife, and then another Lubitsch film that I've never seen, and this one is called Broken Lullaby. And this one stars Lionel Barrymore, Nancy Carroll, and Philip Holmes. And all I know about this one is that it is about a young French soldier in World War I who is overcome with guilt when he kills a German soldier who, like himself, is musically gifted, uh, musically gifted conscript, uh, each having attended the same musical conservatory in France. The fact that the incident occurred in war does not assuage his guilt. He travels to Germany to meet the man's family. So it's about that sort of process, and that guy is played by Lionel Barrymore. Um, so not a comedy, I don't think. Um, definitely more of a dramatic film from the great Ernst Lubitsch. And, um, yeah, it's, it's just one of those that stands out as something I haven't seen and something that is a departure from 
the stuff I'm used to seeing with him. Um, there's a little something on Letterboxd I just found here. This melodrama co-adapted by a longtime Lubitsch collaborator Samuel Raffleson from a 1931 play called The Man I Killed tracks the guilt and redemption of a French soldier named Paul played by, sorry, Philip Holmes, uh, not Lionel Barrymore. By a strange fitch of twist of fate, Holmes later enlisted in World War II and was killed in 1942 in a midair accident. He is haunted by memories of killing a German soldier named Walter. He confesses to a priest, but this does him no good. Paul convinces himself that to truly exercise the demons that plague him, his memory of the killing, he must visit Walter's family, deliver the letter, and confess that he was the man who killed Walter. Instead, overcome with emotion at the great grief of Walter's suffering family, Paul refuses to tell the truth. In fact, he falls in love with Walter's fiance, Elsa, Nancy Carroll. Um, and I'll leave it. I'll leave the rest. There's a little. It starts to get a little more spoilery. But um, uh, Barrymore apparently plays Doctor H. Holderin, so he might be the psychologist or whatever. Uh, anyway, again, a movie that I want to check out because I like Lubitsch and because I'm interested in something other than a comedy and what he might bring to that material. Uh, 2021 restoration from a 2K scan, audio commentary with author and film historian uh, Joseph McBride, films of Ernst Lubitsch, 2001, a 69-minute archival audio recording of a talk by Scott Eyman, uh, author of Ernst Lubitsch, Laughter in Paradise, originally presented as part of the British Film Institute's 2001 Lubitsch retrospective at the National Film Theater. That's really cool. Uh, and then The Man I Killed, 2023, 14-minute video essay on Broken Lullaby and Francois Ozon's 2016 film, France, uh, comparing their different cinematic approaches to adapting Maurice Rostand's 1930 play, L'Homme qui j'a tué, and its 1931 English-language translation, The Man I Killed by Reginald Berkeley. Um, new, let's see, improved subtitles. Limited edition, 36-page booklet with new essay by Christina Newland. Great writer, uh, contemporary profiles of producer, director Ernst Lubitsch, and star Lionel Barrymore. A brief look at the career of screenwriter Sam Raffleson and an overview of contemporary critical responses. So that one, uh, also region B, as are all of these from Indicator. But I love that Indicator continues to vary their output from westerns to Mexican wrestling films. I'm just talking about recent stuff now uh, to... Um, you know, Michael Murphy, the Jay Murphy, the horror, uh, low budget horror director. I really want to dig into that box set. I hope to cover that at some point, but they've been doing so much great work and I really hope people are keeping an eye on what they're doing both stateside and overseas. Because, um, if you don't have a region free player, you're missing out on some really great releases that they are doing that tend to top the domestic releases, certainly in extras and sometimes in transfers and extras, depending on, what you're talking about. But anyway, Indicator is great. Powerhousefilms.co.uk. Go check them out. Follow them on social media. Keep an eye on what they're announcing. Um, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.